Now our topic is uh, about the derivation of Schrodinger wave equation. How to derive this equation? So Schrodinger derived a wave equation for a moving particle which is known as Schrodinger fundamental wave equation. So based on the idea of the de Broglie dual nature of matter, Schrodinger in 1926 derived a wave equation for a moving particle which is called as the Schrodinger wave equation. And this is what we have to derive this equation. So this is our Schrodinger wave equation. Uh, we will derive it. And uh, where mass is, sorry, m is mass of electron, E is total energy of the system, V is potential energy of the system, H equal to Planck constant, and psi equal to amplitude of the wave function, and x, y, z are the coordinates. Now let's start our derivation with the wave equation of stationary wave associated with particles in terms of coordinate system is given as psi equal to a sine 2 pi x upon lambda. So this is the wave equation in case of the stationary wave, right, with particle, where psi equal to amplitude of the wave function, a equal to maximum value of psi, x equal to distance from the nucleus or displacement in the x direction, right, and lambda is equal to the wavelength. So we take this equation as our equation number. 1. So, differentiating equation 1 with respect to x, what we get is d psi upon dx equal to a cos 2 pi x upon lambda into 2 pi upon lambda. Or we can also return as d psi upon dx equal to 2 pi a upon lambda cos 2 pi x upon lambda. So from where we get this equation by differentiating equation 1 with respect to the x. And what is x? It is the displacement in x direction, right? Only in x direction. We do not consider here in y, y direction or z direction. We only consider here with x direction. So again differentiating equation 2 with respect to x we get d square psi upon dx square equal to 2 pi a upon lambda into minus psi 2 pi x upon lambda into 2 pi upon lambda. So this becomes our equation number 3. Now from equation 1 and 3 we get this equation right this portion is equal to the psi because according to the equation first right this comes to equal to the psi and remain as it is. So if we 
find the value of lambda square this equation comes as right this portion goes to the left side and this whole comes to the divide portion and we take as a equation fourth so according to the de Broglie equation lambda equal to h upon m b and on squaring both side of this equation we have lambda square equal to h square upon m square upon b square And if we rearrange this equation and name as equation 5. As we know that kinetic energy is equal to half mv square as equation 6. So put the value of equation 5 in equation 6. We get kinetic energy equal to half h square upon m lambda square. Put the value of lambda square from equation 4. From equation 4. So this is our equation 4. We have to put this lambda square value in our kinetic energy formula. We have to put this equation 4 or the value of the lambda square in kinetic energy formula what we get is if we put the value of lambda square from the equation 4 we get this equation we know total energy A is equal to the kinetic energy plus potential energy And if we have to find the kinetic energy, we put the value of the kinetic energy which is this. Now it's just all rearranging the equation. By rearranging the equation, we come to this equation and if we take the displacement in x direction, this is what we have taken, right? Only in the x direction and if we take the in x direction, in y direction and z direction, then both or the these three terms are included in this equation. So this equation is known as Codinger wave equation and this equation is independent of the time. So it is also known as Codinger time independent equation or the Codinger fundamental wave equation with respect to the space. So this is all about how to derive this equation.